peace of Christ be with you. This is the midweek reflection for Third Reformed Church of Grand Rapids on April 22nd, 2020. Throughout this time of social distancing, I've been encouraging us to hold a couple of practices in tension with one another. On the one hand, gratitude, where we acknowledge points of joy and growth, even what we can call gifts from this strange time. On the other hand, lament, where we acknowledge the losses that we're experiencing and the very real challenges that uh, face us in this time of crisis. I'm feeling the tension between those two pretty keenly today on the 50th celebration of Earth Day. See, one of the things that our family is lamenting became real for us when it was announced that students would not be returning to their school buildings before the end of the academic year. Both our boys did their elementary education at C.A. Frost, which is an environmental science theme school that's part of Grand Rapids public school systems. And this year, our youngest finishes his time there as he wraps up fifth grade. So when we learned that he would be missing all of the normal year-end celebrations and that we would be missing a chance for closure as a family after nine years of investing in that school community, we were heartbroken. And no day stood out on the calendar as much to me as today because at their environmental science school, Earth Day is a big deal. Every year, it is a raucous, rolling party as the kids make their way through various outdoor stations at neighboring Blandford Nature Center and around the school. And it always ends with an all-school sing-along and a tree planting somewhere on the property, something that's especially significant for the fifth grade graduates who can come back year after year to visit the Earth Day tree from their graduating class and watch it grow as they do. I have loved volunteering as a parent on Earth Day. Even though it's a public school celebration, it connects for me at a deep spiritual level. It ties into a profound commitment that I have as a Christian to understanding our place in the natural order and recognizing our role and responsibility as stewards and caretakers of this earth. So I'm lamenting the loss of Earth Day celebrations that I had hoped to have this year. But when I reflect on what it stands for, I can find gratitude as well. Because throughout this time of social distancing, I've been blown away by the amount of people that I've seen immersing themselves in the natural world. Early on, before travel restrictions were in place, we made our way to Ludington State Park and hiked out to the Big Sabo Lighthouse, and we saw hundreds of people scattered throughout that state park. We've seen large groups as well on the North Country Trail through northern Kent County in the Rogue River State Game Area, or out on the rivers as I've fly fished for spring run steelhead. It's been amazing. And I would imagine that some of the big crowds is because other options are taken off the table. But I think some of it too is that we just have an innate sense that there is a healing power to nature. So even though there have been some times where I wish there were less people and where we've had to bypass spots because there's already too many people there, I wouldn't have it any other way. And you might not realize what a gift it is for us as Americans to have that space to go to. And a lot of places in this world to have access to wild, beautiful, natural spaces, you have to be a person of means, significant resources. But from the very origin of America, we have had a commitment to preserving and setting aside beautiful wild spaces that belong to all of us. We've taken the crown jewels, the most beautiful landscapes we have, and set them aside in the national park system. And we have millions of other acres that are preserved and set aside for all of us to go hike, hunt, fish, camp, Uh, collect morel mushrooms, as hopefully we will be in the next couple of weeks. Whatever you want to do in that space, it's there for us. Which is why I'm wearing my public land owner t-shirt today on Earth Day. Because I am one, and so are you and every other American. It's an amazing gift that we have. 
Uh, in addition, today being Earth Day, yesterday marked 182 years since the birth of John Muir, one of the forefathers of public wild spaces who advocated for their preservation and who deeply influenced President Theodore Roosevelt in the creation of the National Park System. Muir was somebody who spent his adult life deeply connected to the Yosemite Valley and fighting for its defense. And he's one of many voices in this world who, while not writing from an explicitly Christian context, connects for me at a profound spiritual level. He has quotes like this one. Everybody needs beauty as well as bread, places to play in and pray in where nature may heal and give strength to body and soul. Or this quote, which is on a framed painting the staff here at church gave me a couple of Christmases ago that says, keep close to nature's heart and break clear away once in a while, climb a mountain or spend a week in the woods, wash your spirit clean. Now, he was tapping into something deep and true. There is a healing power that comes from immersing ourselves in the natural world that God has created and created us as part of. And so in this time of social distancing, I want to encourage you to find ways to engage with nature on a deeper level and to incorporate that as part of your strategy for staying healthy and whole people in the midst of this really disruptive and unsettling time. Uh, for some of you who are confined to your living space, that might mean paying closer attention to what's outside your own window, looking at the new growth that is emerging in bushes and trees around you, paying attention to the species of birds that are making their way back through as spring slowly makes its way into summer. For some of you, that means you can actually get out and physically put yourself in those natural spaces, and there's plenty of them available to us. In the description below this video, I'll include a link to um, a map and directions for all of our Kent County parks that are open and accessible for you during this time. Uh, as you're at home, it also might mean getting your hands on some books that can help you fall a little more deeply in love with this earth we've been given and maybe strengthen your commitment to caring for it. Some of the favorites for me are uh, Sand County Almanac by Aldo Leopold, another one of the um, just pillars of public lands in our country. Uh, Pilgrim at Tinker Creek by Annie Dillard. Or a more recent one that I've loved, Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Uh, another book that does a great job of explaining the history and model of public lands in our country is from a Michigan author, Mark Kenyon, called That Wild Country. Uh, these are all things that, for me, uh, help me recognize that connection and the healing power of being in wild spaces. So I want to encourage you to think about how you might build some of that into the pattern of your life as we continue to make our way through this pandemic. And I would love it if you would add your voice to this conversation in the comments below the video. Maybe you could share a way in which natural spaces have been healing in your life over the years, or share some of the ways that you or your family are getting out into natural spaces and enjoying the beauty and splendor of earth. Okay. So thank you, as always, for uh, joining me in these reflections and for adding your voice to the conversation. I look forward to chances in the future to have some of these dialogues in person, and maybe we can have them together in some beautiful natural spaces around us. So peace of Christ be with you as you move through the rest of this Earth Day and this week.